Right, we are now, our scripture is now on the screen and we want everyone to read together as we open our service this evening. Let everybody say amen. All right, we are ready for the scripture, our opening sentences. Together we read, the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he had founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that had clean hands and a pure heart, who had not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord, from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your gates, and be lifted up ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory, Selah. And if you know that and believe it to be true, shout praise the Lord. Our praise team. I am thine, O And it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. single hour 
Dale Moss of the Shirley Street East Church now come to lead us in prayer followed by the national prayer team with the chorus and the reading of the scripture by Pastor Ina Gray of Exuma Amen What an awesome occasion this is to be in the house of the Lord again Amen. in this 97th biannual national convention I do believe that it's good to be in the house of the Lord Amen. Amen. I believe that it's better to be here than in the best hospital in this country that's true Amen. so as we go before the Lord tonight we want to lift his presence in this room that this evening's proceedings would be by the power and the strength of the presence of God. Great is thy faithfulness. All that I have needed, thine hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, unto me. Father, we are thankful tonight for your presence. We are grateful that you have allowed for us to be here on this moment. Lord, we recognize that it's only by your inspiration and anointing that we are here at this time. We ask that you, O oh God, would look in on these proceedings tonight. I pray that your anointing would be in this room afresh. We realize that every blessing from heaven is of the goodness of God. And we say, what an awesome God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. How great is our God. How awesome is his presence in this place. Father, we ask that you would anoint tonight everything that will take place yes. from the prayers that are offered up oh God I pray that you would anoint the reading of the scriptures I pray that you would anoint the worship time yes. Lord I pray that you would anoint each part of the service I pray that you would bless the choirs oh God I pray that you would anoint everything that we do in this place Lord and that you would anoint it for your glory. Lord, I pray tonight that you would bless the word. I bring before you the speaker tonight, yes. Lord. Oh God. Bishop Maurice, oh Lord. I pray that you would anoint him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Give him a word for this hour. We need to hear from you. Oh God, God we us. need a word Help from you in this place. Help us, Lord. We need your spirit, Lord, to move among us and to work through us. 
Lord, we realize that we are only here by your mercies and by your grace, by the abounding of your love towards us. And so we ask, Lord, that you would move in this room in a miraculous way. Oh, Jesus. I pray now that you would bless souls as they come. You have instructed us that we need to go, therefore, into the world and teach and preach the gospel. We ask, Lord, that even now as we are in your presence, uh, that we are inflamed with the Spirit of God, yes. that we are anointed from the fire of the altar of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we come boldly before your throne of Ooh, grace, uh, recognizing Destiny, your sovereign presence is all we need. Uh, the seraphims, uh, ah, worship before you, uh, but God from the earth, we Hallelujah. also want to lift up a tongue of praise in thy name. Yes, Lord. We glorify your name, O oh God. We ask that this house be a place of worship, Lord. I pray that even when those who walk into this room enter, they would know that you are here. Your spirit is here. Your presence is in this room. No wonder David said to us, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness and yes. come before his presence with yes. singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are your people and the sheep of your pasture. Yes, we enter into your gates yes. with thanksgiving and into you, your courts with praise. Um. We are thankful unto you and we bless your name for oh, you God. are good and your mercy is everlasting and the truth of the Lord endureth to all generation. We pray tonight for this music and fine arts ministry that there would be worship that there would be praise yes, from the pew oh God to the pulpit done. that the presence of the Holy Spirit would go with us yes. even as we go from this place bless our people oh God from Inagua to Grand Bahama Bless, O oh God, all of your children tonight. May there be praises in the house. Yes. May there be adoration in the house. May there be lifting of hallelujahs and glory to God. We thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. In Amen. Jesus' name Amen. we pray. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank
just want to thank you, Lord. You made a way, you made a way. You made a way, you made a way. You made a way, you made a way. some doubted and Jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 5. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. Not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. 
And I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. For we command not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God. Or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then were all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore henceforth know ye no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, Yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. And have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he has made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The word of God for the people of God. Let us say amen. Amen, amen, amen. If you can stand just one moment longer, I just want to ask you to pray for Pastor Keith, who should have been here to read the scripture, but he's not doing as well. And we want to whisper a prayer for him and uh, know that the God we serve will deliver him. For you. you all across this building if you have a relative who may be ill tonight and need healing if you have a friend a colleague who may need healing tonight I want you to just raise your hand for a moment just put your hand up you know calling on your job can't be there because they're not doing well someone in your home not doing well someone in your community you may not doing well this gives us the opportunity all to whisper a prayer on their behalf let us bow our heads now and remember all of them in prayer father in the name of your son jesus christ we come before your holy presence healer deliverer god you are the one who can make the way out of no way you still heal cancer and diabetes you still heal lord liver disease you still lord deliver blindness god of heaven we come trusting in you remembering all of those who are now in need of prayer they need a touch from heaven lord 
They need God and anointing the balm that will heal all of their diseases. We ask, mighty God, that you would look down in mercy upon them. Be with them, dear God. We rebuke the power of illness. We rebuke the hands of sickness. And we pray your anointed hands upon your children. In the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, we ask that you would bring healing to their body. Relieve them of aches and pains. Things known and unknown. God of heaven, we pray that you break the chain that bind them. God, that they may be released into a newness and freshness of life. God of heaven, we pray that you who touch the eyes of the blind man. You, Lord, who said, rise up and walk. You, Lord, who raised the dead. We pray, mighty God. You who said, Lazarus, come forth. You were able to heal every sickness. As we, O oh Lord, remember them in our prayer tonight. They would be healed. They would be delivered. They would be made whole. And they would know, Lord, that you are still a healing God. You are still a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. In the name of your son, Jesus, we claim it done. We claim it according to your will and according to their faith. Be unto them in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And let all of God's people say, and I want you to say, I believe. And let's not make it just words. Let's believe because we know that he can still heal. Let's say it like we know it in faith. I believe. Amen. I believe that Jesus heals and his blood washes whiter than snow. I believe Jesus heals and his blood. I feel God in this place tonight. I feel his presence here tonight. And he is here to heal. He is here to deliver. To give him. To give us relief. And now I want to invite you to put your hands together. And welcome the National Minister of Music. Along with her team. As we get ready for our music program. Minister Nathalie Bain. call from the majesty. He says to come unto me and I will give you rest.
God's word, there is an invitation that is given to all mankind. It too can be received with joy or pushed aside never to be used. In Matthew 11 and 28, Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The table is spread. Who will come and dine? The stories captured in the Bible showcase persons who acknowledge the call, who after having an encounter with Jesus was made whole and could not keep the joy that was bubbling inside of them. We now travel in time to witness the joy of conversion and outpouring of love. The woman at the well. Come, people of every nation, tongues, language, and tribe. Come, come see a man. Come, come see a man. He's the Christ. He told me my life condition. Come, come see a man. Come, 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 come see a man. Come, come, come see a man. He tell me everything that I have done. Come, 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 come see a man. People from every nation, people from every nation and tribe. Why can you come? I can't want you come, come. Come, come, come see this man. Oh, Lord God, he told me about my, my life condition. Oh, God, flesh and blood couldn't reveal this. It had to be the Christ. Oh, Lord God, the son of the living God. Come, come, come see a man. Come see a man. Come, come, come see a man. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Come, come see a man who told me all that I have done. Oh, come. Come see a man who told me everything. Come see a man. Come. Come. Oh, God. Come see a man. Come see a man. Come see a man. Oh, the woman of Samaria. The woman. Oh, she dropped her water pattern and gone. Oh, Jesus asked her for her husband. She said she had none. She dropped her water pattern and gone. Oh, the woman of Samaria, the woman, she dropped her water pad and gone. And Jesus asked her for her husband. She said she had none. She dropped her water pad and gone. Jesus, she stumbled through the tears and made her life. She knew such pain, some spoke in anger, heard folks whisper, there's no place here for her kind. So on she came, through the shame that flushed her face, until at last, Knelt before his feet And though she spoke no words Everything she said was heard As she poured her love for the master In her box of alabaster And I've come to pour My praise on him My glory from Mary's alabaster box Don't be angry If I wash his feet with my tears And dry them with my hair You weren't there The night he found me You 
did not feel what I felt when he wrapped his loving arms all around me. You don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster heart. I spent my without measure into a little treasure box I thought I had found until the day when Jesus came to me and healed my soul with the wonder of his touch and now I'm giving back to him all the praise he's worthy of I've been forgiven and that's why I love him so much and I've come to pour my praise on him like oil from Mary's alabaster box so don't be angry if I wash his feet with my tears and dry them with my hair. Cause you were not there the night he found me. You did not feel what I felt when he wrapped his loving arms all around me. You don't know the cost of the oil. No, you don't know the cost of my praise. You don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster. She was free. I I can't I can't believe it. I killed hundreds, maybe even thousands. But there was one day, one day I met this man on the road to Damascus my name he touched me my life he made me whole now I can stand with authority and win souls for him now that I am changed he changed my mind I am no longer a slave to fear. I'm no longer a slave. I am free. Thank you, Jesus. I am free. I am free. I, I am free. Shackled by a heavy burden. Me a load of guilt and shame then the hand of Jesus touched me and now I'm no longer the same oh he Oh, 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 he touched me. Oh, hallelujah. And oh, the choice that floods my soul. Oh, something 
wonderful happened and now Touch me and made me whole. Since I met this blessed God, Savior, yes, Lord, since He cleansed and made me home. and I will never cease to praise Him and I'll shout until eternity rolls can someone help me sing me. Do I have a witness in the church tonight? And all the joys that flood my soul. Oh, something happens. And now I know he touched me. And made me, I am free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Anointing 
then again others will turn away perhaps thinking they have time or others will be almost persuaded like Nicodemus the reality in some will refuse and be hell bound will you accept the invitation to dine at the master's table for eternity Or will you reject and be hell bound? Good evening. This is Jessica Roberts reporting live from Narrow Boulevard. There are reports that a very important invitation has been extended by His Majesty Jehovah Himself to all who will accept the call. This invitation is not for the elite or the rich only. However, this invitation is for the beggar, the brokenhearted, the businessman, the rich, and the politician. Better yet, for all walks of life, and for whomsoever will accept the call. Come in station. Uh, My fellow viewers, I have received feedback from the studio that there 
are some passers-by who are approaching the boulevard. Let's find out if they have accepted this very important invitation. Hello, good evening. How are you? May I have a moment of your time? I'm from live. Um, miss, what your problem is? What your why? You can't see I in a rush. Eh? I'm Jessica Roberts. Away. What road this is? Where I is? Please this, tell me. This is Narrow Boulevard. Narrow Boulevard. I yes. need to find Broadway Boulevard. No, listen, no. Listen, listen. That's where all the parties and things happening in the 242. Miss, I gotta find Broadway Boulevard. No. Like now, ASAP. No, this is Narrow Boulevard. But what I'm telling you, this is the place that you want to be. Let me tell you why. There is a special invitation from His Majesty, Your Highness, and he's hosting the event. But only if you accept the call. Miss, you don't you, understand English, no, eh? This the place, I though. ain't interested in... Let me tell you. The only invitation I interested oh, in... God. Is the one in May. And that's to go to the coronation of His Majesty, King Philip. Oh. So, um... Miss me with all la his majesty la 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 by the way which his majesty you talking about anyway you ain't talking about the his majesty born in a manger tied on the cross yes la la la, la his la. majesty miss miss yes. no no i need to find broadway boulevard no like now please this is the place to be though no 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 so I can try if you can't help me find Broadway Boulevard and this GPS can't find Broadway Boulevard. I can find Broadway Boulevard on my own. Let me go this way. Party in the backyard. Oh, party all night long. Mm-hmm. Oh, my. Oh, dear. There you have it, folks. Another one bites the dust. She is heading for a road of destruction. Let me see if I could get two more passes by. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Mm. Hallelujah! 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 Hi! Hallelujah! I'm Jessica Roberts. Hallelujah! 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 I'm Jessica Roberts reporting live from Dove Station. How are you? Hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 St- station, give me a minute. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. You see. What is the matter? What what was Hallelujah. What, what Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. God is good. What I just received oh. an invitation. Yes. It didn't come via email. Ooh. It didn't come via text, Mm. but it came to my heart. Oh, Jesus. Oh, miss. You were at the right place. I was down. I was out. Mm. I was hurt. Mm. I was distraught. I was at the end of my rope. But God. Oh, hallelujah. But God. But last night, some missionaries, they came to my house. They told me about a man that could meet Jesus. my needs. Hallelujah. You see, miss, I had tried everything Ooh, else. They showed me the Hallelujah. scriptures. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I believed. I believed. Hallelujah. I believed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I'm free. Jesus. I am healed. I'm delivered. I'm restored. Hallelujah. 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 His majesty. He got a hold of me. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Now he is my only yes. heartbeat. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. 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 That's a happy camper. I'm glad she answered the invitation. Hallelujah. Reporter, 
Hello. Hi, Report yes, us. this is Jessica Roberts reporting live from Dove Station. Can you hold this lamp for me, please? No, I'm reporting. Ma'am, ma'am, just hold a lamp, please. Can you hold this lamp? Okay, just for thank a minute, you, I may get fired. You, thank you, Okay. Now, I heard that there's an invitation to dine with His Majesty. Yes, I'm going to rest that true? it down for a minute. That's yes. fine, you can yes. rest it down. But you see, I got this one last date, y'all, mm -hmm. and you know... I won't go on that date, right? Child. But after that date, no. I promise you guys, I will be ready. No. Ready to answer. <sighs> no, you have to go now. The call. Jesus. I'll be ready to answer the call. No, you have to go now. Anyway, like I was saying, His Majesty visited me last night. And I told him, I say, His Majesty, mm -hmm. don't you worry. Mm -hmm. I'm going to answer that call. But I just got this one little thing that I need to deal with. So That's you can watch that for me, His okay? Majesty, no, yeah. no, come back for this lap. Mom, five, five come minutes, minutes, five minutes. I promise you, I'll be back. I'll answer the call all the way. Oh, Lord. What a day, folks. There you have it. Interesting comments and feedbacks from our passerbys. The invitation was extended. It so happens that there was no date and there was no time. It was an open invite. I guess only the master knows the day and the time. I am Jessica Roberts reporting live from Dove Station. Until next time, all your lumps and be ready. Good night.
life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book according to their works Sorry, but I, I don't know you. Jesus, what do you mean? I had my lamp and it had oil in it. I only had to, oh, Jesus. I said I was coming back in five minutes. I had my lamp with my oil. You could ask anybody. Ask the angels. I had my lamp with my oil. You, your name is not here. Jesus. Depart from me. I've never known you. What? Jesus? No! No! My master, my lord, I've waited for this moment. Rise, my child. Welcome. You've done well. Enter into my rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Goodbye, world. I stay no longer with you. Goodbye, pleasures of sin. I stay no longer with you. I've made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. His Majesty. Uh, um, who are you? His Majesty. Listen, I get one WhatsApp from hell. And His Majesty, I can't go there because they say it hot down there. And I some mango skin girl, I can't turn charcoal. His Majesty, Sovereign Ruler, Lord, Savior. Depart please. from me. 
I've never known you. I'm a glad pilgrim on my way, going to the glory land. Jesus, my only hope and say, holding me by the hand. It is such joy to understand things that I never knew. Keeping my promise to the Lord, I'm going through. Good evening, Jehovah. This is Jessica Roberts reporting live from Narrow Boulevard, Dove Station. I'm sorry, Jessica Roberts, but your name is not <laughs> written. Jesus, check again. Something, something wrong. Jessica Roberts from Dove Station, from Narrow Boulevard. Che you know what? Jesus, check page 242. Uh, this in alphabetical order because I don't think you Jessica, Jesus, Jehovah you have to depart Jesus, your name is not here Jesus I encourage the people I was the one who stand on ball a narrow boulevard for you I can't even speak right now because Jesus you show my name in on that list don't you know that your works Jesus, will not save you Jesus I was the one who sang, I danced, I preached, I watched them people dirty feet. And you could tell me my name ain't on that list? Your name is not here. Jesus! By grace alone Jesus. are you saved. And not Jesus. your works. Jesus! You must have clean hands and a pure heart. And a soul that has not been lifted up to vanity. You must not swear deceitfully. You must repent of your sin and trust in me alone. Make sure that your name is written. God means you believe he is real you trust what he said is true following his plan is the only way we can survive both here on earth and for all eternity by saying yes to Jesus by laying it all at his feet your cares and your burdens and accepting his invitation. You will live a life of freedom and peace. We are encouraged to go spread the good news that Jesus saves, heals, and delivers, and that he is a mender of the brokenhearted. If you don't know him, get to know him in a real way. The porter is here to put you together the porter's wheel is turning mended joy giver and counselor prince of peace accept the invitation to come and go heaven will be your resting place heaven will surely be worth it all You have fallen by the wayside of life. Dreams that visions shattered, you are broken inside. You don't have to stay in the shame that you're in. The part of Together 
Let the church say amen. 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 That has been the music and fine arts department program for this year. And they did an excellent job. Let's show them our appreciation. Whole team of them headed by Minister Nathalie Bain and all the musicians and ministers of music and heads of the department. God bless you. The, the potter. Tell your neighbor it's the potter who wants to put you back together again. It's the potter. Amen. And that potter is Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, we give God thanks that we have been able to be blessed by this fine arts and music and, and we give God thanks for all that he has done. We want to now welcome some of uh, those who are visiting with us tonight and uh, I want to first of all acknowledge our, our out of town guests and that includes our general, our presiding bishop, international presiding bishop and I'm, for those of you who were not here last night, now you can see him up and close up. And I'm going to just ask him to stand as I call his name, Bishop Timothy Coulter. Let's give him a good warm welcome. He'll be speaking for us uh, on Sunday night as we close out on ZNS TV 13 and Radio Bahamas. He'll be here speaking for us and we're praying for him. That the Lord will bless him and we're praying for his dear and precious wife who isn't with him. Uh, but she's home doing some good old home, home doing with her mom who's not doing so well. And we remember her in prayers as we go on tonight. God bless you, Bishop Coulter. And we also have with us, we welcome back home our own General Presbyter for the Caribbean and Lut. Atlantic Ocean Islands. Let's give him a good share and his dear wife, Bishop Dr. Clayton Martin and his wife, Dr. Sonia Martin. Amen. They, I guess at least in my time they've been here every year. They've not missed a year except COVID and when he preached here, everybody thought he was here. And so we give God thanks for both of them. And finally we have our National Director of Finance and Administration, Bishop Paul Holt and his dear wife, Barbara. Let's welcome them, please. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. We are so thankful. Now we have a number of persons visiting with us, our civic leaders, and I'm just going to mention, I guess I can call all the names, but we'll mention some of those who are here. Got a call from the office of the uh, leader of the opposition, and uh, he gave me the message that um, he won't be able to make it with us tonight. And uh, he said he'll send a representative, and I think he's sending a good representative who will represent him well, and that is Member of Parliament for St. Barnabas. Member of St. Barnabas, Deputy Leader of the Free National Movement, Honorable Shannon Don Cartwright and Mrs. Cartwright. Please stand and be acknowledged. Amen. God bless you. Amen. And accompanying him are a number of persons who are here tonight. Uh, Shonel Ferguson. One of the prides of the Bahamas, Olympian. Stand up and be acknowledged. We, we acknowledge you. One of our Olympians in the long jump. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for being here with us. Oh, my good friend here. Uh, Mr. Ellsworth Johnson. Give him a good chair. God bless you, Mr. Johnson. You've been here a couple of times and and uh, you've even spoken to us in one of our seminars. God bless you. Thank you very much. And then we have Alvin Brown from Golden Gates. Please stand and be acknowledged. Marcus Miller from Bainstown. 
And I believe this individual is with the team as well. Reverend Dr. Patrick Rutherford. I don't know if he's in the wrong place or not, or in the right place, but I know. So thank you very kindly for being with us tonight, all who are accompanying Mr. Cartwright, and we pray God's blessing upon you. Uh, from our religious side, I want to welcome to the sanctuary of East Street Tabernacle, Apostle Falman Ferguson and Elder Sophia Ferguson. Stand and be acknowledged, Apostle. If you see he looks like me, it's because he looks like me. Amen. <laughs> close family, close family. Amen. Doris Henfield. These are persons with him. Please stand and be acknowledged. Doris Henfield, Cheryl Thompson, Maxine Clark, and several others are here with the apostle tonight. God bless you. Cause he is home. He is homegrown. And we thank God for him. All right. And now we're going to ask Mr. Shannon Cartwright. Oh, yes, I do. I got all kind of families here tonight. Uh, here we go. We have from the voice of deliverance. Uh, their chief apostle would say the voice that makes a difference. And he said that he could not have been sent a message along that he could not be with us tonight due to other scheduled matters. But he sent along um, his bishop out of his church, uh, Bishop Carl Fred Curry. Give him a warm welcome. Give him a warm welcome. And the delegation with them tonight. We appreciate them coming and sp spending time, including... Uh, his wife, and we give God thanks, Sister Adabel Curry. She's an elder as well in the church, and we thank God for her being by his side tonight. And if you don't know, if you don't know, the bishop is Sister Rose's brother. So everybody went quiet. <laughs> yes, that's her brother. Bishop Carl Curry is Sister Rose's brother. God bless you. He's always with us. He's always here to support us. And I think I have to visit with them sometime soon. God bless you. We are now going to invite um, the Honorable Shannon Don Cartwright, who will come and bring remarks on behalf of his leader and uh, his organization. Okay, they're trying to keep you quiet tonight. There we go. That means you don't uh, don't talk too long, you know. <laughs> Bishop Franklin Ferguson, Bishop Coulter, other spiritual leaders here this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. I also wish to recognize the presence of my wife of 465 days who's here with me. And yeah, I, I, and also the members of the 
Free National Movement and the opposition who are here this evening, just to ask them just to stand once again, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. I am just so grateful to Almighty God to be here with you on behalf of the Honorable Michael Pintard, the leader of His Majesty's Loyal Opposition and leader of the Free National Movement. And as I stand here, I am reminded that in my faith and, in that, and that in our faith, that a test of our faith is not how much we love Jesus, but how much we love Judas. Amen? <laughs> so, we are here tonight to celebrate with you in this 97th biennial, biennial national uh, convention. We celebrate with you during a time where the Commonwealth of the Bahamas and the Bahamian people will be celebrating, it, celebrating its 50th year of independence. The preamble to the Constitution, as many of you will know, says that our freedoms are guaranteed by a national commitment to self-discipline, industry, loyalty, unity, and an abiding respect for Christian values and the rule of law. It is that respect for Christian values that brings us here today. And as I recognize and we recognize your theme of reconciling the world to Christ, we also reconcile the Commonwealth of the Bahamas to Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 And so we are always reminded that in our several capacities as members of parliament, as members of the Senate, as legislators, the work that we do pales in comparison to the work of the church in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And so as we look ahead in these 50 years, for another 50 years of independence, we ask the church to continue to direct our steps, to continue to direct our thoughts, because no amount of social degradation in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, no amount of poverty, no amount of crime can be solved by man alone. We need the work, the work that we put in for Jesus Christ, for Almighty God. Amen? Amen. And so we are grateful to be here with you on this occasion. The singing tonight has been splendid. They deserve a round of applause. Mm. And on behalf of the Honorable Michael Pintard, the leader of His Majesty's loyal opposition, the members, executives, meritorious council members of the Free National Movement, we extend our continued prayers to you in this convention over the next few days, we pray that your deliberations will allow the manifestation of whatever it is that God has for your body of churches and the church in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And before I take my seat, as Mama would say, something dropped into my spirit. <laughs> something dropped into my spirit. And that is... For many of us here tonight, including myself, we may be going through something. Yes, Amen? True. We all look very good. Mm -hmm. Mama would always tell me, when you're going through problems, ain't nobody got to go. Just make sure you look good. <laughs> but we all are going through something. Yes. But I just want to say to you tonight, just put it at the Lord's feet. Many other afflictions of the righteous. Of the righteous. But, but God the delivers them from, us, from it all. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure being here. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Let's give our member of parliament and deputy leader another good round of applause. We appreciate all those who serve our nation. To ensure that all who serve our nation, uh, we pray for them. That God would bless and keep them as they give public service in our nation. Let's give another round of applause. Well, now we have a few of our church friends here. And I'm going to ask, first of all, as we come to this part of our service, that our Apostle Farman come and bring your brief greetings. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bishop. I, before I start, I, let me ask my wife of 34 years, my beautiful wife, Elder <laughs> Sophia. Amen. <laughs> this, this, it should give the, the, the deputy leader something to follow. And I would love to have all of you who are with me from United Faith Ministries International to please stand uh, with me at this time. There should be 11 of us present here tonight. And I'm so grateful. You may be seated. Thank you so much. I want to give honor and glory to our God who has been so faithful to us. And of course, even as I visit Bishop, I greet you and your dear wife. Bless the Lord. Minister Dr. Rovina Ferguson, of course, the general overseer, yes. newly elected general overseer. I bless you, sir. Uh, your wife in her absence. Our Bishop Emeritus, Bishop Dr. Bryce Thompson, yes. the father. Bless you and your dear wife. the General Presbyter of the Caribbean and your dear wife, I bless you. Uh, to all of the distinguished bishops and pastors in the house tonight, to all of you wonderful people, I greet you in the name of Jesus the Christ. I've come tonight to share with you in this 97th annual convention. I've been a part of it for as long as I could remember all my life. And even though, even though I've branched out into United Faith Ministries only for the year of COVID, for one year, I was absent from the convention. Amen. I've been coming every year. As you celebrate your 97th year under the theme, Go Ye Therefore, Reconciling the World to Christ, I've come with a word of encouragement to you as you celebrate and as you are charged to go. This theme, I believe, Bishop, God has given you this theme, a very awesome one for times such as these. We are living in difficult times and I believe the church is called to be the light of the world and we are called to be the salt of the earth something hit me tonight when I watched the uh, demonstration one of the participants brought up a lamp and it hit me uh, to remind us that the time is going quickly, the time is fleeing away. And this theme tonight, this convention is calling us, I believe, to arise. Amen. It is calling us to 
do what the master has commanded us to do and that is to be reconcilers of the world he has sent us here to be ambassadors as I recall ambassadors are sent to nations at the will of the of the king or the head of state and then they are recall when their assignment is over I want to suggest to you four things as I go to my seat if you're going to reconcile the world and make this truly a time where we're not just preaching ourselves crazy we're not just um, assembling for a good time but we're truly desiring to do what God has called us to do. I want to encourage you that there are four things that the Lord has placed in my heart. And that is that we must see through the eyes of God. What does that mean? We must see what God is seeing. God is calling us. He says the harvest is truly plenteous. The laborers are few. And he said to us that the harvest is already ripe. We must lift up our eyes and see. Secondly, we must hear through the air of God. That simply means we must hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. God desires us to hear. And if we hear what he says, we must be willing and obedient. Then we will eat the good of the land. The third thing is that we must speak through the mouth of God. He has called us to speak as oracles of Christ. So we must speak what God is speaking. And God's desire, my brothers and sisters, that the church would be empowered by his Holy Spirit to declare boldly the message of reconciliation to the world. Fourthly, finally we must possess what God is possessing through the feet of God he's called us to go into all the world he told Moses wherever your feet trod take possession of it we must go back and take back this world for Jesus the Christ amen so true I I want to encourage us, and in particular, since I serve as a, as a pastor, I want to encourage pastors that we must do more than just preach at people about going. We must model going. <laughs> we must model going to our communities. We must arise and we must lead them. Jesus modeled what it means to go into the world, the marketplace. He took his uh, uh, disciples with him. They got the training. They saw what he did. And then when the time came, he said to them, now you go. He sent them out. This is, I believe, a strategic time in the body of Christ. And the hour is late. And so, finally, as I move to my seat, if we're going to reconcile the world, we must love people. We must love people, including lost people, including people who have offended you, included your enemies. We must love people. We must love people. I believe, as I heard, And I prophesy it because the Lord has said it to me. He's going to do a new thing in this house, this convention. And I believe that the Lord is going to restore to the house as we make our, as we stand in obedience, God is going to restore to the house. That which the enemy stole from us. Amen. So let's get up. I heard somebody says, the church of God of prophecy you see today, 
Brother, you will not know her tomorrow. I believe that with all my heart. I believe that. So you must be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be strong. And fight. I've also brought my check as usual. I bought my check. And my faith stands here tonight. Because I've been sent on an assignment. Yes. But I have to ask the bishop permission to do so. <laughs> the Lord has sent me here to tell you money is not your problem. <laughs> money is not your problem. You are going to see a harvest. And one of the things that's going to happen to this church. Never said this anywhere else. But he sent me here to tell you. The Church of God of Prophecy in the Bahamas is getting ready to see an uncommon breakout of finance. My Lord. Y'all hear what I just said? The blessings are coming. Now, I was nervous because the bishop told me only a brief remarks and I don't like to be disobedient. Yeah. And so I, when, I, when I heard that, I was wondering if the Lord still wanted me to do this. <laughs> I don't think he changed his mind. <laughs> 30 seconds. And he sent me here to challenge this convention. If you do what the Lord says, and the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Amen. You will see a breakout in your finances, in your family, like you have never seen before. Praise God. We believe it. I have been sent to challenge 16 of us right now. Yeah. This convention will never be the same. And it will have been the greatest convention you've ever celebrated. 16 of us. We don't have it tonight. You can bring it by Sunday. To give this convention an offering of five hundred dollars. Oh, we oh. got one right here with you. I take thirty seconds. I don't waste time. One. Thank I you got one much. right here. I bought Two. one. This is going to be one from UFMI, and I will have another one return for my wife and I. Hey, That's man. three. Come on. I need the rest. One. I heard another voice. Give me some envelopes so I can hand them out. This will be a seed of uncommon breakout. You don't have to believe me. I've been around in ministry for 23 years. Recently, I went into Grand Bahama to do a work for the Lord. And when I got into Grand Bahama, came off the airport. As I heard one of the preachers had to feed some people, some 3,500 people. Somebody met me and said, Apostle. I said, yes. He said, you don't know me. You don't remember me. I said, I don't know. What. I, yes, I should know you. He said, well, I came to give you a seed. Let me tell you something. God showed off. God showed off. Can I have those 16 people who will stand real quick? Stand where you are. And I'm going to ask the ushers to give you an envelope. I'm not trying to raise the offering. They're going to do that. But I'm trying to get some people to have a breakthrough as the Holy Spirit has sent me here that this convention is going to walk in it Amen. come on real quick alright one yes, we already got three we got four I heard I know I heard Bishop Sterling all the way down there amen here comes another one alright stand so I can see you y'all do me a favor come, come right out here come right out here come right out here come right out here come right out in the front Got another one here, Apostle. Somebody. Hallelujah. We got another one. Behind another one in the back. Yes. Let me tell you, you never miss a God move. I don't trifle no, in God's house. Apostle. I don't play games. Take it now. Come on. I'm going to leave this right now. All right. Do we have 16 yet? Coming out. Come out front. Listen, if you think sixteen, if you think five hundred dollars is money, you ain't ready for wealth. You ain't ready for what God want to do. Yes, 
Two, that's two. All right. You right? Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. I almost disobeyed God because I, 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 you know, I don't like to be out of order. Hallelujah. I see you, sir. Can I get some ashes with the envelope real quick, please? I already made the mistake of coming without him. Out him. Ah, she's coming. The Lord will Hallelujah. provide. Come on. Come on, somebody begin to worship God. Come on. Somebody need a breakthrough. You need a breakthrough. You're going to trust God. You're going to trust God. If I tell you the miracles and the manifestations that I've seen, it'll blow your mind. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. They're giving them out. How many we got down there now? Hallelujah. Come on. That's right. Come. Come. Amen. I'm not going to tell you what the Lord showed me. I'll know when it's over that it is the Lord. Let's go. Amen. I'll know that it's the Lord. Amen. How faithful. I already know it's the Lord, but I'll know even further that God getting ready to do something uncommon. Hallelujah. I'm not doing this for show. I, I, I really don't care. I get too old now. I turned 55 this year. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Have faith. Come on. Trust God. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. You I'm so glad that, and if you, if you want to do it now on credit card, he brought it to me. And I'm glad that you did this because I wouldn't have to go back. I can swipe my card right now. Thank you so much. Keep coming. God Amen. wants to do something in this house tonight. Yes, sir. I too many it. people need a breakthrough. You need a breakthrough. If you need a breakthrough, boy, it may you may be you may be down very low in your bank account. You got to trust God. He sent a, a prophet, Elijah, went to a widow's house, Kabashande Bekosia. Yes, hallelujah. When she left there, the famine was over. She had a debt. She had a debt funeral written out, but God turned it around. Yes, somebody, I'm telling you, this is the last time I'll say this and then I'm going to move away. God turned it around. Amen. God turned it around. Count how many we got up there. Come, count how many for me. How many we got up there? And I'm going to tell you something. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-three, twenty-four. Let me tell you something. The number in my head was twenty, but God just yes, showed me. Yes. Hallelujah. God just now I asked for 16, but in my spirit I received 20 persons given. We are up to 24. Four. We're up to 24. And I believe yes, sir. that a miracle is happening right now. You may want to get in on this. You may want to get in on this. I can tell you the Holy Ghost can preach in here in 20 minutes. And we wouldn't be able to move everybody slain in the Holy Ghost. Oh God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm ready to leave. Hallelujah. I'm ready to leave. Some people are all right. Some people. Yes, write your name down. Yes, write your name on the envelope. And if you want to do it now, you can do it now. There's a credit card machine here. You can do it now. I'm not going to ask for forgiveness because I asked the bishop for permission. And I believe God is about to do something uncommon. I want you to do something for me. Bless the Lord. Bishop, would you ask? Would you? Would the rest of us stand for a moment? Stand for a moment. Stand for a moment. And I want you to lift up your voice. And I want you to give God 
a shout of glory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Hey. Glory be to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name Hallelujah. of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you praise, dear God. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. We give Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Father, I ask you, case you come out, see on our night. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the Even name. Even as I have obeyed. Blessed be the name. Show yourself strong and yes, mighty. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Give them an uncommon miracle. Thank you, Jesus. Let God be glorified. Glory be Let to God. God Glory be glorified. Be to God. Glory be to God. We exalt your name. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, we need a revival in the Hallelujah. Bahamas. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God the glory. Hallelujah. Give God Hallelujah. the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord another shout of praise. Give him another shout of praise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Isn't God a good God? What is... What is $500 if you can give it to the honor and glory of God? It means nothing when the doctors give you bad news. It means nothing when the lawyer gives you bad news. God is good. When you give it with all your heart, the Lord will bless you. Well, let's welcome Bishop Carlford Curry, our last speaker for the night. Bishop Curry, come and greet the convention. Give the Lord a good share as he comes. Amen. 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 Oh, let's, let's give the Lord a clap praise one more time. Let's give the Lord a clap praise. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Amen. We indeed blessed of the Lord. We thank you, Bishop Franklin Ferguson, the National Overseer. Come, let's give God a clap praise for him. We also want to acknowledge the presiding general overseer, Bishop Coulter, and all of the various bishops, leaders, locally and internationally. I would uh, want to quickly ask those representing the Voice of Deliverance to stand wherever you are in the audience. My wife is also here. I'm going to ask her to stand. <laughs> now, I am I'm really delighted to be here in this 97th biannual convention I am representing the Chief Apostle Leon Wallace and Bishop. He sends his greetings and his congratulations to you. He has an appointment, a medical appointment. He's in Florida, but he's going to be back, God's willing, on fr Friday, tomorrow. Amen. But he sends his congratulations, and we take note of your theme, Go ye therefore reconciling the world unto Christ. It is a powerful theme, and it's an appropriate theme for the church. And while this is your charge to the, for, to the church of God of prophecy, this charge goes to every believer in the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. Go ye therefore into the world and reconcile it to Christ. It, the word reconciliation brings to, to mind the fact that the Bible speaks about duality. If there is a need for reconciliation, it means that there's alienation. And so because people are separated from God, there is a need to come back. When the failure of man began in the Garden of Eden, there was separation, there was alienation, and there was enmity. Now God is requiring us to come back into harmonic relationships. It requires a realignment of relationship. And so we thank God for this theme, and we want to congratulate the Church of God of Prophecy, its leaders. 
We want to encourage them to continue in the work of building the kingdom of God on this site. And we stand behind you and with you. And will also acknowledge and accept this call to go into the world reconciling to Christ. God bless you. Amen. 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 Bible says, you know, we read that passage of scripture which says, whatsoever your hands find to do, do it what? With all your might? And what else? Anything else? Well, I'm calling the finance committee that they would come now. We have some announcements to make after this. And let me remind you that we want to do it quickly. We're running and we want to get the preacher on. So let's get the word. Is God faithful? Amen. Yes, he is. I want to read a scripture and I'm mindful that we're under time constraints. But I want to read a scripture. But before I do, I'm here to receive the offering tonight. And I want us to remind you that there are two ways we can receive the offering tonight. We can do it online, www.cogopbahamas.org. Click donation tab on the top of the page. Enter your credit card information and the amount. And then you click submit. All that information should be on the screen for those who are viewing by social media. You can also give by using the credit card machines here in the tabernacle. It's in the northwestern end of the, uh, in the foyer. And also our ushers also would have uh, those devices as well. You can swipe, you can use your chip, and you could tap up to $50, but if you wish to give more, you can just enter in your PIN and the amount. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindred of the people, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due to unto his name. And then the word says, bring an offering and come into his courts. Tonight I want to just come from this platform. Has God been faithful to anybody in the house of prayer? Oh, yes. Amen. 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 Dr. Forbes gave a a seminar during the course of our convention and she said that this year is this within me year bless his holy name i am delighted certainly to be here at the east street tabernacle in this our fifth night our fifth day of this great big feast our national convention i trust that you are enjoying looking and listening and enjoying
every head bowed in the sanctuary for a quick moment Father I'm mindful that sometimes when we come to the offering we don't consider it an act of worship but today we worship you because you've been good to us and Father like the honorable Cartwright would have said some of us look good but we've gone through some mayhem and we've gone through some madness we've gone through some challenges we've gone through moments of deep grief we've gone through some moments of deep depression we've gone through anxiety father some of us have been hospitalized but we declare in this house tonight you have been faithful Father, some of our homes are still disruptive. Some of our homes are still dysfunctional. But we stand on the promises of God. And if you have been faithful to us last year, you will be faithful to us this year. And you will continue to be faithful to us. You are a promise keeper. You are the light in the midst of our darkness. And we declare your faithfulness tonight. Father, I declare your faithfulness as we lift our offerings in this house of prayer tonight. We give your name praise. In the midst of all we've been through as a country, we've gone through COVID. Loved ones have died. Some of us have been in hospital. But your faithfulness still continues over us as a people. And we worship you with an offering tonight. We give your name praise. And we give your name honor. Somebody seal it with an amen. Come on, somebody seal it with an amen. Somebody seal it with an amen. Us oh, just kindly move quickly and receive an offering. You may be seated in the house of prayer. While you're coming with your offerings, we're going to make a few announcements. Listen as you give, give generously. And as the ushers receive the offering tonight, we want to also remind you that on Sunday morning, we want to show love to our presiding bishop. And it's a love offering, it's a love touch offering. We're challenging you to at least give $100 as we celebrate the goodness of God in his life. He's been in ministry in this capacity for the last 10 years. And I think it's a 50 year anniversary, Bishop. Him and Sister Roe have been married for 50 years and they continue to be example to us. And so I want you to, on Sunday morning, remember the Love Touch offering. The ushers will also have an envelope if you'd like one. Kindly receive them and govern yourself accordingly. God bless you. Amen. Amen. As you give, the Lord will bless you. Just let me acknowledge Miss Petra McDonald. She is part of the Bahamian European athletes team uh, and she is here as well tonight let's give her a good share as you give your offering uh, I want to introduce to you a new book tonight that you can get a copy of uh, it's called the goldfish principle and the authors are here with us tonight Bishop Paul Holt and Sister Barbara they're here this is their book the goldfish principle and I you know if you I, I tried to skim a few pages while when I got the book to see what's one there's some good nuggets in here and we're offering this book to you for only fifteen dollars okay only fifteen dollars so you can get pick up one anytime and this will really bless your heart from what I see here this is a little gem here and uh, don't leave the convention without getting a copy get a copy of this book it will be around at the booth uh, you go to the booth and we'll have the books there and you will ensure that uh, you get a good copy of this book uh, and and you can have it autographed as well you know uh, one of these days that signature may be worth something so get your copy Get your copy. That signature is going to be worth something. Make sure you get The Goldfish Principle. Excellent book from what I've skimmed in the last two hours or so. And I want you to get a copy of it before you leave the convention. 
uh, reminding you that we also have the registration for the Caribbean Leadership Conference, which will be held in Grand Bahama in July, July 19 through 22nd. It will be the Caribbean coming to the Bahamas for our leadership conference. And you know, uh, every two years or so we go to the Caribbean, we travel from Bahamas. It's the second time, third time or so we're having it in the Bahamas. But this time we're going to Grand Bahama. Uh, and we want everyone to be a part of the celebrations. It's a leadership conference. And so remember what the uh, General President for the Car Caribbean uh, has offered. And that is if you, um, and Bishop Thompson, Woodley Thompson, who is chairing the conference committee, if you register in this, co in this convention, you will get your registration for half price, which is only $100. Yes, $100 towards your registration is paid if you pay before. And that's why we have the credit card machines behind there and uh, all the rest of that. And we want you to ensure that you register. And that is for those persons between 18 and 30. Between 18 and 30. We're training our young people, but this conference is for everyone. Old and young, the not so old, the not so young. So remember, you get your registration done, and one and done, and it's over. And you're ready for conference going to Grand Bahama this year. Let me just tell you something, if you don't know yet. We said already all along we're going to have a special on Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoon, we are going to have a special in our parade. It's never been done before. And I challenge anyone to show that to me where it's been done. But this year, we are having two military bands with us in our big parade. No, we are, if you look at the back of your program, you see that we are, celebra we are saluting the Bahamas, our nation, that will be 50 years on July 10th. Anybody in the building who was on the hill on July 9th? Anybody was on the hill on July 9th? Wave your hand if you were there, like me and Sister Rowe. We were there. Only a couple of weeks away from the wedding. Uh, but we were on the hill, on uh, Clifford Park, watching all the events, watching the, Bah the Union Jack come down and the Bahamian fly go up. And so the church is cele celebrating with the nation. In fact, Sister Ro and I are celebrating with the nation as well, especially because this is our 50th year of marriage. 50 years of wonderful marriage. Wonderful marriage. And uh, we want you to join uh, us in the celebration on Sunday afternoon. Royal Bahamas Police Force Band never did it before, but will be joining us in our parade on Sunday. You don't want to miss that. As well as the Bahamas Department of Corrections Band, they will be with us. And the only reason we don't have the Defense Force Band because that is their anniversary and they're having their service on that evening. But all of them were ready to come and march with us. But we'll have two. And so, and you're going to have cadets out there with them as well. I believe when this is all over, we're going to have possibly near 150 cadets from these two places joining us. So you can't miss it. You can't allow others to be in the parade and you're not there. Remember what we said. If you can't join us here in the valley, we want you to join us at the candy kitchen on the top of the hill. Can't join us there? Join us by the Hilton. But make sure before we get to the Western Esplanade, you are there. This is historic because we've never had military bands in our parades before. So come on out. Bring your low shoes. No high shoes. We don't, we want you out here Sunday night. You gotta be here to support the uh, International Presbyter, you don't need to watch this on television or anything else. You've seen it many times on television. But we need you here 
in the house so that we can celebrate our final session of the convention. Everybody is ready for Sunday afternoon? Yes, we're ready, we're ready, we're ready. God bless you, God keep you, God strengthen you, and yet I remind you, the books will be available at the booth, uh, only $15, and you can purchase your book down there and have it autographed, and uh, the Lord will bless you, the Lord will bless you. Well, we had such a great time today in our service, and tomorrow we're looking forward to another great session Beginning at 10 a.m. in the morning, it's basically uh, one or two items other than what well, we'll be fully involved in business session tomorrow. It's tomorrow is the business session. So um, we look forward to you. If you don't get out in the morning, make sure you get out tomorrow night. Get out tomorrow night. We ain't going to be, if you look at your program well, uh, that's not the session for shouting and jumping. Well, that's the session for business. So God bless you, God keep you, and God strengthen you. And so tonight I am so pleased that we are now ready for our choir selection. I want them to come right on and uh, so we can move on. Let's give the church from where? Yamacraw Hill. I tell you, they had a, when we had the first hymn sing, they came out here with a crowd. I thought they brought the whole community. But they had a massive crowd and Bishop Julian Johnson and all the hardworking saints from Yamacraw Hill, uh, they're going to sing to God's honor and to God's glory tonight. And give them a chair. Yes, bring them on. Amen. It's Julian Johnson, Minister Valencia. Wonderful saints down at Yamacraw Hill. Their choir will bless our hearts. And they're still coming. Amen. They're still coming. Amen, amen.
I'm dwelling in Beulah land. Amen. Amen. Let's give Bishop Johnson and Sister Johnson and all the saints of the Yamakura Hill Church a good share. Well, you can make that chair better than that. Let's give them another good chair. Oh, we're getting ready for the word and uh, Bishop Cheval Gray is going to come to pray a prayer for all those elected and selected individuals or appointed individuals uh, who serve our country on both sides of the divide. And I'm going to say, Bishop Cheval, pray also for the speaker. Our speaker tonight is Bishop Maurice Sims, a young man anointed of God to serve and to do his will. Yes, you can give him a good share. He humble young man, and we pray God's blessings upon him as he delivers the word here tonight, that the word of God will take root in our hearts. We've been blessed throughout this convention with a word from the Lord, and we believe that he will speak to our hearts again tonight. Let us pray. Thou, my everlasting portion, more than friend or life to me, all along life's pilgrim journey, Savior, let me walk with thee, close to thee, close to thee, all along life's pilgrim journey, Savior, let me walk with thee. Holy God and our Father, we thank you for this evening, God. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Here we are gathered in this beautiful edifice, God. We thank you that we have felt your presence. We thank you that in your presence there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. We have come this evening, God, to pray for those persons, oh God, who have been selected and elected, oh God, to work in the church. Oh God, the harvest is plenteous. The laborers are few. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will touch the hearts of your people. You told us in your word that I must work the work of him that sent me. While it is day, for the night comes when no man can work. And so God, we pray that you will anoint your people with fresh oil. Oh God, as we thrust in the sickle, we pray that we will work, God, oh, to reap the harvest. Men are dying. And so God, we pray that you will touch the hearts of your people to rise up. The word of God tells us, arise and shine, for the light has come, and the glory of God is risen upon thee. We pray that you will stir us again. We pray that you will bless us again. Yes, Lord. We pray that you will yes. lead us with fire from your throne another time. Yes, Lord. God, we pray for those who have been elected to serve the nation. We still believe your word that says blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. We pray that you'll order their steps. We pray God that you'll take control of them. Hallelujah. As they lead this nation God. They will lead with integrity. Yes Lord. They will lead in decency. We pray God that you will touch Oh God, our Prime Minister, yes. the leader of the opposition, we pray for the whole House of Parliament. Yes, Lord. As they lead this country, God, they will lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. Take charge tonight, yes, Lord. Lord. Take charge. Take charge tonight, God. 
Oh God, we are your people. Oh, and the sheep of your pasture. Lord God, I pray when, oh God, we cannot pray any longer, God, that you will fix it for us. Yes, Lord. We pray, Lord God, for tonight's speaker. Do Jesus. Bishop Maurice, God, you've anointed him before. Yes. I pray you will anoint him again. Amen. Let him speak as the oracle of God. We pray for a rhema word. Do Jesus. Oh God, we pray that the word. Hallelujah. Will heal. Yes, Lord. The word will cleanse. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, both now and ever. And the people of God say, Amen. Let this congregation stand. And if pr praise team, are you ready? If you can give me a song from heaven, the next five minutes, we're ready to hear the word. You've only got five minutes, so let's do a five-minute number as a praise to the Lord, and uh, let's hear from heaven. Let's hear from heaven. Five minutes. Can we shout a praise tonight? Is there a praise in the house tonight? Is there a praise in the house tonight? We're going higher tonight. We're going higher. Worship with us.
you take your seat let's do a declaration together the declaration is I will listen to the word I will hear the word I will research the word I will be transformed by the word I will live by the word. I will declare the word. I will not be swayed from the word. And may the Lord help us all. So to do. God bless you. You may be seated. Greetings and salutations to this 97th biennial national convention in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas in the name of Jesus the Christ our Lord and Savior Bishop Dr. Tim Coulter presiding Bishop Bishop Dr. Clayton Martin General Presbyter and Minister Dr. Dr. Sonia Martin Bishop Dr. Franklin M. Ferguson National Bishop and Minister Dr. Rovina Ferguson Bishop Dr. Bryce Thompson and teacher via Thompson. Bishop Dr. Colt. Bishop Rudolph Arthur Field, Secretary and Sister Arthur. All the bishops in the house and ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The district of Crooked Island where I am honored to serve as the district supervisor, associate pastor, Rodney Farkerson and members of the Cripple Hill Church. Sister Philippa Farkerson, Pastor Rodney's wife, she's here tonight. And some of my other relatives are in the house. God bless you in this house. Minister Darrell Ferguson, Associate Pastor of the Fox Hill Local Church. And members and followers of the Fox Hill Local Church where I am honored to serve as the senior pastor. God bless you. I love you. And I saved the best for last. The love of my life, my, my wife of 29 years, 3 months and 19 days, including leap years. Minister Anavi Iona Sims, would you stand, baby? Sugar and spice and all things nice. I said it once, I'll say it twice. Sugar and spice and all things nice. A better wife none can find. And I am so grateful that she is mine. I love you, baby. Our two beautiful daughters, Mercian and Monet. Monet, would you stand? Monet, would you stand? I love you, baby. Our eldest daughter, Mercianna, is away in university. And hopefully tuned in tonight. Our text comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And I need to get into this because I have some a ways to go. And it was already read, so I will not read it again. The theme for this convention is, Go ye therefore, reconciling the world to Christ. Tonight, for a moment, I will focus on the theme, Reconciliation, the Key to Relationship. I will highlight three points. One, reconciliation is key to relationship with God. Number two, reconciliation is key to relationship with each other. 
And three, reconciliation is key to relationship in the resurrection. Second Corinthians chapter five is a continuation of Paul's thoughts beginning in second Corinthians one. Paul addresses the holistic nature of the reconciliation that comes through Jesus Christ and our participation and responsibility in reconciliation. The reconciliation of our spirits is instantaneous. It is called regeneration and is called regeneration. The reconciliation of our souls, that's our minds, our will, and our emotions, is sanctification and is both instantaneous and progressive and is manifested through the renewing of our minds through the word and demonstrated in how we live. The reconciliation of the body will be complete at the resurrection. All are part and parcel of our relationship with God, accomplished through reconciliation. So Paul explains how we are reconciled, how to live after we are reconciled, and where we are going because we have been reconciled. I will be looking at this text from the bottom up. Number one, reconciliation is the key to relationship with God. What is reconciliation? Reconciliation means to bring back a former state of harmony or friendship. This means that harmony was broken. Friendship was severed. Hostility and alienation became the new way of life. Relationship was broken. The world recognizes the need for reconciliation. There are reconciliation organizations, reconciliation commissions, reconciliation programs, legal reconciliation, bank reconciliation, and the list goes on. However, long before the world recognized this, God, the author of reconciliation, implemented his plan of reconciliation. Estrangement between God and human beings began after Adam sinned against God in the Garden of Eden, which put man out of alignment. Because man was out of alignment, everything that God gave him authority over became out of alignment. The earth became out of alignment and still groans as a part of the creation for the manifestation of the sons of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Systems and governments became out of alignment. Kings and thrones became out of alignment. Principalities and powers became out of alignment. Man's relationship with the sub-creature became out of alignment and the list goes on. However, Colossians 1 and 20 states, And having made peace through the blood of the cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, Jesus came to reconcile all things unto himself, not just some things. Jesus came to reconcile all things unto himself, not just some things. God placed such relationship, such value on his relationship with Adam. That when Adam was hiding, God still went to the spot for the usual meeting and asked Adam the soul searching question, Adam, where art thou? God would not allow his creation to be out of alignment and estranged from him because of the value he placed on his relationship with his creation. Reconciliation is pursued when high value is placed on the relationship. 
So God made a unilateral decision without consultation with mankind to recon- to make reconciliation possible. And so from our text, 2 Corinthians 5, 19 to 21, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he had made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So verse 19 says that God did not impute trespasses or lay to the, the sins to the account of the world, but reconcile unto himself a world that was sinful. Now we must ask ourselves a question. How can a holy God reconcile, have relationship with, or commune with a sinful world? God is just and must punish sin. Man sin, so man must be punished for sin. Man must die because the wages of sin is death. On one hand, God is just and must punish sin. But on the other hand, he is the father of mercy. So how does God satisfy his justice and at the same time satisfy his mercy? Oh God, the Father sent his son who, be, who became man. Jesus lived a sinful, sinless life as man. Please the Father in every way as man. So rather than pouring out his wrath on the world and destroying the world through substitution, God poured out his wrath upon the man Christ Jesus so that the world might be saved. He satisfied his justice by punishing his son while at the same time extending mercy to the world. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The sin of the world was not excused, but the penalty was paid by Jesus Christ, the son of God on the cross of Calvary. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 21 says, for he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God. So Jesus took on the sins of the whole world even though he did not sin. And the purpose was so that we might be made the righteousness of God. In Christ. Now note the relationship. That the righteous all righteousness. Is in Christ. That without Christ. We are not righteous. We cannot be righteous. Isaiah 53 6 and 5. States all we like sheep. Have gone astray. We have turned everyone. To his own way. And the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Oh hallelujah. We are healed body, soul and spirit. Because of what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the presence of God in this house. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
the word of reconciliation is that God has committed to everyone who is born again. The word of reconciliation is the message of the gospel. That no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter your economic status, no matter the color of your skin, no matter who loves you or who hates you, no matter the circumstances of your birth, no matter how you smell, no matter if your name is Adolf Hitler, no matter if it is Osama Bin Laden, you can be reconciled to God. Oh, hallelujah. Reconciliation is the key to relationship with God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse 20 states, We are ambassadors of Christ. An ambassador is a diplomat sent from one country to the next to represent his country. An ambassador does not represent himself. An ambassador only speaks what he or she is told by his or her government. Oh God. An ambassador may have feelings and ideas. However, he or she presents his or her, does not present his or her ideas. He or she presents the policies of his or her government. How the ambassador represents his or her government will determine how people view his or her government or her country. We are ambassadors of Jesus Christ and he has entrusted to us the responsibility of the word of reconciliation. How we represent Christ will have major influence on how people view Christ and the body of Christ. How we represent Christ will have major influence on the world to which we are sent to preach the message of reconciliation. We might have feelings. We might have ideas. We might have thoughts. We might have thoughts about who should be saved. We might have thoughts about who has been lost. We might have thoughts of who there's hope, no hope for. We may have thoughts about who are write-offs. We may have thoughts about doctrine. But our feelings and our thoughts are irrelevant. Our feelings and thoughts have no meaning. We represent Christ, our King, and our King says... Be ye reconciled no matter who you are. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Be reconciled to God no matter who you are. Now watch how Paul represents Christ in verse 20. Paul says, now we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead. Be reconciled to God. Paul says we speak on Jesus' behalf. And here is what Jesus is saying. Be ye reconciled to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 19 of this text says God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Well, if God already reconciled the world unto himself when Jesus was on the cross, why is Paul saying, be ye reconciled to God? Did God reconcile the world when Jesus was on the cross? Or do we still need to be reconciled? The answer is that while Jesus died on the cross 
and made it possible for us to be reconciled, it is not automatic. We must respond to reconciliation. We must accept him as savior in order to be reconciled. We must put our faith in the finished work of Christ on the cross of Calvary in order to be reconciled. It is your choice. So I say to anyone who is listening to me right now, be ye reconciled to God. Be ye reconciled to God. Be ye reconciled to God. Hallelujah. Our harvest field is in our homes, on the jobs, in our social media platforms, in our churches, in our communities, in the grocery stores, at the gas station, at the hair salons, on the airplanes, on the cruise ship. We do not need to go far for the harvest. We live, we walk, we shop, we do recreation in the harvest field. The world needs the word of reconciliation. Give them the word. This world is on a collision course with the wrath of God. And we are running out of time. There is an urgency for the word of reconciliation. Today, men can have husbands. Women can have wives. Men can marry their mothers, sisters, and children. People can marry their dogs, cats, and horses. Your gender is determined by how you feel. If you feel like a male today, go in the male restroom and use a male name. However, if you feel like a female tomorrow, go in a female restroom and use a female name. Nowadays, some people are pushing the idea of not determining the sex of children at birth, but allow the children to choose. Countries are approving what God condemns and making it more difficult to freely preach the gospel of Christ. The world has become insane. However, this is a part of the harvest field to which we are sent to preach the word of reconciliation. So we pray you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. Be reconciled to God. Be reconciled to God. Reconciliation is the key to relationship with God. Hallelujah. Number two. Reconciliation is key to relationship with each other. Reconciliation brings us into relationship with God, deposits within us the characteristics of God, and empowers us to live an effective life through Christ. Reconciliation brings us into relationship with Christ, deposits within us the characteristics of Christ and empowers us to live an effective life through Christ. So after we are reconciled to God, we have to live on earth as though we have been reconciled. So back to our text, 2 Corinthians 5, 14 to 18. For the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all then were all dead and that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again 
Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation or creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and had given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. There's so much in this. Let me, verse 14 says, the love of Christ constraineth, that holds us together. Because if Christ died for, for all, all of us were dead. So none of us have advantage over the other. No one is better than anybody else. The Jews are not better than the Gentiles. The blacks are not better than the whites. Men are not better than women because God concluded all on the sin. All on the sin. For reconciliation to be accomplished, everyone must be on level ground with no one having advantage over the other. Hallelujah. Verse 16, wherefore henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. So we do not treat our brothers and sisters after the color of their skin, their economic status, their nationality, their gender or educational status, because we are all one in Christ. Verse 15, and he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died to them and rose again. So we do not live unto ourselves. We live to please Christ. This is why Paul say, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Note, note verse 17. If any man be in Christ, to be in Christ means to have relationship of rest with him. To have communion with him. To have fellowship with him. This relationship with Christ causes everything to become new. And our, our way of thinking change. Our attitude change to align with the attitude of Christ. All things have become new. Oh, but I'm trying to get to verse 18. And all things are of God who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And had given us the ministry of reconciliation. The word of reconciliation in verse 19 is what we preach. is the gospel of Christ. The ministry of reconciliation is what we do. The ministry of reconciliation must match the word of reconciliation. In other words, when we preach the word of reconciliation, it must align with the ministry of reconciliation. Well, this word ministry comes from the same word diakonia, from which the word deacon is taken. In Acts chapter 6, when the Grecians complain, the widows complain that they were being neglected in the daily ministration. The apostles said, select deacons to address that. When we don't believe it's, it's feasible for us to leave the study of the word to serve tables. But you select yourselves some deacons. And we will give ourselves the prayer and the word. 
So the, the ministry of the deacons is defined by what they do. Similarly, from the same word, the ministry of reconciliation is defined by what we do. So when we go out and minister the word of reconciliation, and people who are drunkards, homosexuals, drug addicts, gangbangers, when they respond to the word of God, and are saved, the ministry of reconciliation says, you should treat them as though they are. That their all is passed away, and behold, they have become new. The word says you can become new. The ministry says, show them that they are new. Demonstrate to them, demonstrate to them through the ministry of reconciliation, the word of reconciliation that we preach. In other words, live what we preach. Hallelujah. Live what we preach. Live what we preach. They were sinners. They were drunkards. They were homosexuals. But they have been washed. So they should be treated as though they have been washed. Hallelujah. There's sometimes in the body of Christ. We don't allow people's past to stay in the past. We view them in the past, even though they've got a glorious future. God says, uh, let the word, let the ministry of reconciliation match the word of reconciliation. Practice. Hallelujah. God says, I have given you the word and the ministry. It is your responsibility to represent me on earth. Church, how are we representing him? How are we representing him? Is he satisfied? How are we representing him? Yes, we can preach good. Yes, we can preach the kingdom down. Yes, we can preach that the people got saved. But what about the ministry of reconciliation? What about the ministry? Hallelujah. God is calling us to ensure that the ministry that he has entrusted to us is effectively operational. Reconciliation is key to our relationship with each other. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, further. Further. In order for the church to effectively reconcile the outside world to Christ. The church must practice the ministry of reconciliation within the inside world of the church. In order for the church to effectively reconcile the outside world to Christ, the church must practice the ministry of reconciliation within the inside world. Of the church. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm going to preach what God gave me. Hallelujah. God, I couldn't sleep last night. I was just trying to get here. Hallelujah. Family is at war. For 5, 10, 20, 30 years. Have not spoken to each other. I estrange. God is calling families to be reconciled to each other. Oh, you know it's the truth. Go 
God says be reconciled to each other in the church. Church members, church brothers and sisters at war. God says it's time to be reconciled. 5, 10, 20, 30 years, it's time to reconcile. Glory, hallelujah. It's time to be reconciled. It's been going on long enough. God is calling us not just to preach reconciliation, but to live reconciliation. Yes, we're going to reconcile the world, but we need reconciliation in the church. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Here you Husband and wives at war. Divorce and remarriage increasing in the church. Oh yeah, I know. God says it's time to be reconciled. Glory to God. Be ye reconciled. Practice the ministry of reconciliation. God has given it to us to practice. Glory to God. And as far as I know, you can't teach people what you don't know. And you can't teach people what you don't practice. Glory to God. This is an awesome responsibility. God help us in this house. Help us in this house. Church, we can sing together. We can dance together. We can pray together. We can attend church together. However, singing, praying, Attending church together, attending convention, do not fix reconciliation problems. God, can I tell you something else? Praying does not fix reconciliation problems. Reconciliation fixes reconciliation problems. Oh, preacher, what are you saying? What are you saying? Oh, God. You see, when there is an offense and we pray, prayer will make us feel good at the moment. But after a while, the, sur- the, prayer, the, the offense will surface. It will resurface. Go nowhere. Or you need some scriptures to back up what you say. Oh, how do you reconcile? Let's see what the word says. Matthew 5, 23. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother had ought against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar. And go thy way first. Be reconciled to thy brother. And then come and bring thy gift. So you come to the altar to pray. And there's an offense. Jesus says, you better leave off praying. Go to your brother and sister. And ask forgiveness. Why? Because prayer does not fix offenses. Reconciliation does. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, that's only one scripture. You need more? First Peter chapter 3, 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of God, that your prayers be not hindered. What he says? You can go and pray, but I'm not going to hear your prayer because why? You've offended your wife. 
go and treat your wife right. And when you treat your wife right, your prayers will not be hindered. Glory to God. Or could it be that some of us are praying and praying a long time, but God is not hearing our prayers because offense is still there. That we have not fixed the offense and because we have not fixed it, God says, I'm not even hearing your prayer. Glory to God. Oh, it's not about talking. It's about living. Hallelujah. Live right. Live right. Hallelujah. Give you one more scripture. Galatians 6 and 1. If a brother be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest ye also be tempted. Brother or sister fall, you have given the ministry of reconciliation, pick them up, restore them. That is what the ministry of reconciliation is all about. So reconciliation is key to our relationship with each other. Hmm. Oh, hallelujah. Number three. Number three. Reconciliation is the key to relationship in the resurrection. On November 27th, 2002, I was outside my house and getting ready to attend our Sunday morning service at Fox Hill. When the Lord began to minister to me about his holiness. And here's what he said to me. The church is fast becoming like the world. Corruption, sexual immorality, and apostasy is rampant. Prepare my people for my coming. I immediately saw myself preaching at a national event in this tabernacle. And I wrote down National Convention 2023. So tonight, I'm on an assignment. Jesus does not do a halfway job in reconciling us to himself. While he reconciles our spirit through regeneration and our souls to sanctification, he will also reconcile our bodies through the resurrection. So that we can live and reign with him forever. It is at this point that the total process of reconciliation would be complete. Our bodies are tense with many limitations. We experience troubles and heartaches. We experience pains, sicknesses and diseases. And no matter how much they say, age is only a number. And you are only as old as you feel. The fact of the matter is, the older you get, you realize that your body is subject to decay. The things that we were able to do at 15, you can't do it at 50. And much less Sister Thompson at 85. So Paul says, 2 Corinthians 5, 2 to 4, for in this our bodies, we groan earnestly, 
desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. So we groan, which means we have grief in this body, to be clothed with our bodies which is in heaven. You see, when God created us, we were designed to live forever with an immortal body. However, because of sin, our bodies became mortal and we have to die. So this body grown for the immort- immortal body. Paul says that as long as we are in this body, we are absent from the Lord. But when we throw off this body, we are present with the Lord. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle was dissolved, we have a building and house of God not made with hands eternal in the heavens. Jesus is coming back to complete the process of reconciliation by giving us an immortal body. Oh, hallelujah. This immortal body will establish the full relationship that God intends to have with his people. You see, in this body, we are limited because this body can only endure so much. So God is going to give us an immortal body. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God. Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, 20 to 21, for our conversation, that's our citizenship, is in heaven, from which also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus, who shall change our vile body, that is our low estate body, that it might be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. So our bodies will be glorious just like Jesus' body. Oh, but that's not all. John furthers the thought in his epistle. First John 3, 1 to 3. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we shall be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that had this hope in him purify himself, even as he is pure. Jesus is coming back to give us glorious bodies. We will be like him. Glory to God. What a hope! Hallelujah. What a hope. What a hope. Jesus, Jesus. Are you looking for that blessed hope? Are you looking for that blessed hope? What a hope. Glory to 
Dear God, what a hope. Tonight, we are admonished to prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord. Church, prepare yourself for the coming of the Lord. Politicians, prepare yourself for the coming of the Lord. All of us prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord. So preacher, when is he coming? I do not know. And no one knows. It could be 10. It could be 20. Could be 100. Could be 500. Could be a thousand years from now. But I am doing what the Lord told me to do. Prepare my church for my coming. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up, shall be caught up, shall be caught up. Together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Comfort ye one another with these words. My God, what a hope! What a hope! What a hope! So, how do we prepare? For the coming of the Lord. How do we prepare for the coming? Allow Titus 2, 11 to 14 to answer this question. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared to all men. Teaching us that denying ungodliness... And worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity. And purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. So how do we prepare for the coming of the Lord? We deny ungodly lusts. We deny worldly lusts. We live soberly and righteously in this present world. A.K.A. we live holy. God is calling his church to holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Holiness in the pulpit. Holiness among the musicians. Holiness. Holiness in the brass bands. Holiness. Holiness among the ushers. Holiness. Holiness in the parking attendants. Holiness. He's calling us to holiness. All of us. Seemingly, sometimes we get to the place where it seems as though everything buck up goes. But I came to remind you that God still calls us to holiness. The standard has not changed. Holiness become a time house. Oh Lord, forever. Calling us to holiness. Yes, we can still live holy. We can still live holy. That is not old fashioned. That is not old religion. 
God requires us today to live holy. Oh, we can sing about our great grandmothers and grandmothers as much as we want. They were living holy. If we don't live holy now, we will not see them. Holiness. Glory to God. How do we prepare for the coming of the Lord? We forgive those who offended us. We ask forgiveness of those who we have offended. We make reconciliation in those estranged relationships. God will not excuse us when we stand before him, prepare for the coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Prepare for his coming. As God prepares us for his coming, a shift is coming to this church. God is ministering to me about this all last year. A shift is coming to this church. Not a shift that man orchestrates. Nor will it be a shift that man can stop. But it will be a shift that God is going to send from heaven. A shift is coming to the church. Prepare yourself for a shift. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. The shift is coming. The shift is going to shake and break up fallow grounds. The shift is going to change some traditions. The shift is going to destroy some glass ceilings. God says, a shift is coming. Prepare. But here's the sad thing. Some will not be a part of the shift. Some will not be a part of the shift. But nevertheless, a shift is coming to the church of the living God. Jesus, I was sitting at my desk doing my work. Then the Lord began to minister to me. Five days later, he came and ministered the same thing. Here's what he says. Hmm. The apost- the fivefold ministry will be magnified and manifested in the church of God of prophecy. The apostolic, the prophetic, the pastoral, the teaching, the evangelist will be manifested and magnified to a greater degree. Jesus came to reconcile all things. A shift is coming to this church. Whether you believe it or not, I want you to hear it. Because that is what the Lord said. A shift is coming. Now I want you to take note. That the previous speakers said the same thing. The previous speakers came here and said a shift is coming to this church. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall he prosper. So shall he be established. Believe his prophets. So shall he prosper. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. A shift is coming. Are you going to be a part of that shift? Are you going to be a part of that shift? 
Are you going to be a part? Can everybody stand for a minute? And I need you to do something for me. I need you to turn around. Look, turn your head around. Look back. Look, look forward again. Do it again. Turn back. Turn forward. Do it one more time. Look back. Turn forward. That backward look you just did is the old church. That backward look you just did that's the old church. The forward look you just did that's the future church. Get ready for a shift. The old church is behind us. God is doing a new thing. He's shifting this church. Get ready for the shift. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Get ready for the shift. Hallelujah. So as I make this altar call, Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, thank you. Glory to God. If you are in this church, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior. If you know, don't know Jesus as your Savior, you need to be a part of the shift that God is about to cause to happen. Can you come? Can you come to this altar if you don't know Jesus? As your Savior, the Spirit of God speaks to you in this house. I'm standing at your heart's door and I'm knocking. If you would open the door, I will come in and sup with you and you with me. If you're in this house, you don't know Jesus as your Savior, would you come? Would you come? Hallelujah. Would you come? Hallelujah. Number two. If you in this house, you and your family members are estranged. Estranged relationship. The Lord did not want us to come to this convention to preach about reconciliation. He wants us to come to this convention to be reconciled. You in this house. Estranged relationships. You know you and your family members are not getting along. If you were in this house, would you leave your seat? Go and reconcile with your brother and your sister in this house. The Lord says, prepare my people for my coming. Don't just preach about it. There's things we have to do. Go and reconcile. If you're in this house, go and reconcile. The name of Jesus. You are in this house. Church brothers and sisters estranged. If you in this house, fix it. Move out of your seat and do it. Forget about what people are thinking, what they would say. Move out of your seat and reconcile. It's calling us. It's calling us calling us to reconcile husbands and wives estranged 
He is calling us to be reconciled. If you and your husband are strange, reconcile with your husband. Move out of your seat. If either one is not here, get on the telephone. Call and be reconciled. Be reconciled to God. Be reconciled to each other. Be ye reconciled. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be reconciled. So tonight, we focus on reconciliation being the key to relationship. The three points are that reconciliation is key to our relationship with God. Reconciliation is key to our relationship with each other. And reconciliation is key to relationship in the resurrection. Would you lift your hands in this place? Would you bless our God in this house? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, O God. Bless your name, Father. We give you honor, glory, and praise. We magnify you, Jesus. We worship you because you alone are worthy. None like you. God, reconcile us, God. God, in areas, O oh, sovereign King, where we need reconciliation, God, we repent in those areas. We reconcile with our brothers and our sisters, biologically and church. We reconcile with our spouses. Help us, Father. Thank you for making the avenue of reconciliation possible. We bless your wonderful name. We give you glory and honor. We magnify your sovereign God. You alone are worthy. All honor and all glory go to your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done. In earth as it is in heaven. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the glory forever for thine is the kingdom. The power and the glory forever for thine is the kingdom. The power and the glory forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. The word of God has gone forward. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Everybody praying. Let us pray a prayer of thanksgiving. Father, in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, we give you thanks. Lord, we give you praise. We magnify your name. We thank you for your blessings tonight, God. You are indeed a good God, and we are indeed glad. We thank you for the word tonight that has gone forward with precision, with clarity, and with power. And we know, dear Lord, that your word will not return unto you void. We thank you tonight, God, for the broken hearts that has been mended. We thank you for the sick bodies that have been healed. We thank you for the confused minds that has been regulated. God, we thank you for the ministry of reconciliation. We give you glory, God. We thank you for the seed of the word that has been planted tonight. God, through the songs of Zion. Oh God, through the spoken word, through the song and dance. We thank you that the seeds have been planted. God, Because it is you who have given the increase. We thank you tonight, God.
some ministry or some counseling, we invite you to use this number, 565 It's on WhatsApp. You can use that number to call us and somebody will be there to pray with you and to talk with you and to give you good counsel and to reconcile you back to God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let your grace, let his faithfulness, let his mercy overshadow you even now. And we say good night to you. God bless you. And be ye reconciled to God in Jesus name. Amen and amen. In this sanctuary. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. God, we give you all the praise. For we know, God, that your word will accomplish everything that it has been set out to accomplish. God, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. And Father, most of all, we thank you for the increased God to love you even more God we give you praise and now the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ may the sweet 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 fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now 